Georgia high school shooting just made his first appearance in court. This comes as we learn more about the alleged shooter. One student says Colt Gray left his class and then tried to get back inside. I saw students go back to open the door for him and they backed away. I'm guessing they saw something, but for some reason they didn't open the door. Gray seen right there facing murder charges. Authorities say that he will be tried as an adult. His father, Colin Gray, also facing charges. He is due at court within the next half hour or so. ABC News learning that Colin Gray gave his son the AR style rifle used in the attack as a Christmas present. Law enforcement also spoke with the father and son more than a year ago after the teen was accused of making school shooting threats on social media. Two students and two teachers were killed in Wednesday's shooting. The nine other people injured are expected to make full recoveries. I saw like my math teacher and um, he was all covered. I saw blood everywhere. Well, there was a moment where I'm like, I might die today. So frightening, the motive for the shooting. I mean, I don't know him. I rarely spoke to him. He doesn't really speak. When he is there in school and he's not skipping, he doesn't talk. Um, so I don't really know him. That's out. Yes. Single file line down this out right here. That was definitely. Like the moment that it happened, he was at the door and they, I knew they were looking for him already, but he was at the door and they almost let him in until they backed up and then he turned away and that's when you hear like the first rounds of fire. So you kind of like, I don't know, I already kind of had a feeling it was going to happen and it was him. Just because when you think of like shooters and how they act or things that they do it's usually the quiet kid or like that's a stereotype for it to be and he was the one that fit that description in our class within minutes law enforcement was on scene as well as two school resource officers assigned here to the school who immediately encountered the subject within just minutes of this report going out once they encountered the subject the subject immediately surrendered to these officers and he was taken into custody. Uh, he, is, he will be charged with murder and he will be tried as an adult and uh, handled as an adult. I do, however, want to identify the victims of this, of this incident today. What's the deal? It's the boy Dwayne McLean at Dwayne McLean TV. Finally at the crib, I get to do a edited blog for y'all, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got to be in the whip. You know, I get to do it for the cover of my own home, so that's a blessing. Make sure we grind it. Remember, it's the NDO movement. No days off. It's the only way out of this uh, cycle they got us in. But today's video is going to be about this right here. And I'm, I'm really, I'm at the point now to where I just got so many questions when it comes to these school um, these school situations, you know what I'm saying, where a, a kid pulls up or a personal individual comes to a school with a weapon and they just release all the, the ammo out of the weapon and harm people. You know what I'm saying? I'm being very, very YouTube uh, PG right now, you know what I'm saying, because they are crazy about these certain topics. But 
I just think it's crazy that a 14-year-old kid, because we had a similar situation with Donald Trump's situation where he had an, an attempt on his life, and it was a kid who climbed to the top of a building by himself. Now, I got a lot of questions about this story with this 14-year-old kid. I showed y'all the clip earlier where the father said he bought his son an AR-15 for Christmas. And they also, if you look at the clip, it said that he had a trouble home. And last year, he was investigated by the FBI for online threats. Now, that's a, a funny thing with me. We got to ask this question. Why is it, that, why did the FBI get involved with a child online threat? Why did the FBI, when did the FBI ever get involved, y'all? Ever. This, this kid is clearly an MK Ultra. Uh, I, I shouldn't even say that, but for, for moving forward, he's going to call it an Ultra or a K, a K, a MKU. He's clearly an MKU suspect. If y'all don't know what MKU is, look it up. It's a CIA operation that was created by the NAZIs. And uh, when they became from Operation Paperclip, so after World War II, we gave a lot of NAZIs immunity and we brought them over to our organizations and they became part of the CIA and they created this program called the MKU where they split your mind and get you to do certain things if you didn't know. So I do believe this kid is part of them. The MKU was also responsible for a few serial life takers back in the early 70s, early 80s. One that I know for a fact is the Unabomber. Now, this kid being 14, I got so many questions. So the, the, the girl said he left the class and came back in. So he leaves the class, comes back in. Did he, did, so my, my question is, did he have the weapon outside of the school somewhere hidden in a bush? How did he get the weapon on school campuses? So from my knowledge, moving, I, I, I used to recruit for the military, so I had to go to a lot of schools in my area. And I'm pretty sure the school being in Georgia, and I think all schools have this rule where you have to get signed in. So or the door is locked. You have to get somebody has to let you into the building. So did he already bring the weapon to school? Now, it could be like that. That's how I'm thinking. He probably put pieces of it in his book bag, moved his days, hid it somewhere, and put it together. But that takes training. Y'all, nobody, if you've never um, did, fired a weapon before, you there's a lot of fundamentals into it. It's a lot. I remember when I went to the military, I was shocked of how hard it is to aim and hit your target. It is very hard. It took me seven years to finally get down packed with learning how to shoot. Now, granted, I was in the National Guard, so we wasn't going to the range that much. But... By my six, seven year in the military, I was I was good. I was really good because I learned all the fundamentals and and and, and I perfected them. You know, it takes a lot, and then also to hit moving targets. So how did he get the weapon on campus? Who trained him? How was he able to hit fourteen people? You got to use. Was he using iron sights? Was he using sights? Uh, here's an image of the weapon. It's right an AR fifteen. And his dad said he got it for him for Christmas. So he clearly has a troubled home. And these parents being on it, man, and when, these, when the FBI starts targeting these kids, they want to target kids in bad homes so they can easily get access to them. So here's the weapon right here. How is he able to get ammo there? And who would not know a child is bringing stuff? And like I said, let's say I had it in his book bag. He's been planning it for weeks and just stashed it in his locker and put it together. But somebody had to have seen him. And like I said, it takes training to do all that. And what was he... Who taught him how to aim? You know, all the different fundamentals that go into it. And I'm telling you, y'all, it's hard to hit 14 targets. He, unless he had a, 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 a drum or, and he's not an automatic weapon. So unless he had a, a, a drum or an extended or extra rounds, it's really hard to do all that. So I do believe that the FBI got, that's why the FBI got involved with those online threats, because they are the ones who are training this kid. He's getting military. His, I seen his dad, didn't that, that, his dad, on teaching this boy, his, this is not your, let me show you our image of the dad. This right here is not your, your gun ho, John Wick hunting dad. This right here is just like, this is a regular old, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know his training, I don't know his background, I'm just saying, people want to say, oh, well, his dad probably taught him, you know, white people, y'all, yeah, all white people is not teaching their kids how to use a firearm. Not all white people. I was, when I was in the service, them boys, them white boys wasn't shooting like that. Don't get it twisted. A lot of them were, the best shooters were white, ain't a lot of y'all, but not everybody. So I'm not going to say that his father was the main one teaching, but either I do think it's crazy that you buy his son, your son of uh, AR-15. Now, don't get it twisted. I have seen 
crazy parenting, especially in in the hood. Y'all know we seen crazy parents in the hood. They let the twelve year old hit 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 the hit the uh, the wood, hit the blunt. You know, uh, they they had the twelve year old out there doing this. All when we were a boy in the hood, boy, that, there's a terrible parenting going on. Terrible. Have you drinking a beer? All that bad stuff. So I'm not putting it past him that he did this. I just think it's strange. You know, then how long has this boy been using this weapon to, sh to be able to fire a firearm confidently? You know, I just think these stories are, st are strange. You know, I do think that this kid, especially since he has the blonde hair, I do think this kid uh, is up under some type of CIA programming. And they said that he did this because he was getting bullied for being uh, a kid who was into, you know, the same sex. They said he did this because he was getting bullied for years, you know, and I, I do think we need to see this soon as possible. Because I remember when I was in school, we I thought we had one for real that he was going to, because Will's a kid who always got bullied, you know. I was always nice to these kids, like if I see them. You know, just in case you did snap, yeah, I'd be there, you know. But times have gotten a lot different than then and now. So he probably does have the access to bring a weapon on the school. I'm just saying my main question is who trained him how to do it, you know. And then with this kid here, I do believe that somebody got involved, got in his head to set this up because now it's going to be a whole push on – because, you know, the main end game for this, and I'm not saying this is a hoax. You know, I don't want to be that person to say it's a hoax, even though I didn't believe Sandy Hook. I didn't believe Sandy Hook. You know, uh, I do feel like the government got involved with this. So if these type of situations are happening, there is an end game. And I don't trust none of the police department. I feel like they're all part of the, you know, the brotherhood. So the end game for this is to have firearm control pretty much more strict gun laws to where they're trying, they really would love to take our weapons away from us, you know, pretty much. That's what that's their goal is, to take our weapons away, our right to defend ourselves. Now, that's going to be hard to do with millions of Americans with weapons, you know what I'm saying? But I think the government seeing that they shot themselves in the foot and they're trying to stop the bleeding before it gets too worse. Basically, we already let these, these Americans have way too many weapons. We have the most weapons ever and now they want to try to get some control on it, you know, cause, because if they're ever, they're, they're afraid of a militia or anything like that, or martial, well, if they ever declare martial law, it's going to be a fight back, especially among the ones who are controlled. The criminals are going to have the weapons everywhere. But I do think this is for gun laws. There's going to be more G rights because they had to also put out that effect the kid was yagged out, you know. I do think the kid was just suffering because of him just being, you know, um, it sounded like he came from a poor home. It says here, former neighbor Lauren Vickers told the police, told the Post that Gray was raised in a neglectful household and that was visited by the police and child services on a regular basis. So he was already having issues at home, stuff like that. That can always go wrong. Then you buy the kid a, a, a weapon for Christmas, that's adding more fuel to the flame. Now he has, uh, it's not like it's a case of bad parenting, but then when you throw the FBI in it, that's when you get crazy. The team was investigated by the FBI on May 23 over online school shooting threats, which included posts with photos of guns. When does the FBI ever get involved? You know how many young boys post photos of, of, of firearms on the internet and the FBI don't get involved? What does the FBI get involved with this one? All right, let me show y'all this, this tweet by this guy. I don't know how true this is. People just post anything. But it, it says here, GPS data reveals that an FBI special agent previously linked to multiple other shooters was within a thousand feet of Georgia school shooter Colt Gray on 11 separate occasions over a 14 month span. So that's where his training came from to me. And they say this guy was linked to other shooters. I don't know how true this tweet is. I need to see some more data. So uh, I do, this is all, I do agree with something like this. I do think that an FBI agent or some type of agent has to get to these kids to teach them how to use a weapon efficiently. I'm telling you, man, somebody can, you could have a, a, a weapon drawn to somebody and they can literally be right in front of you. You can miss your target. Yeah, this poor kid, he was bullying for, for being, you know, himself. You know what I'm saying? I thought that stuff died out, man. You know, I don't know what this area like, maybe because he's a predominantly, you know, Caucasian, but, you know, we never really bullied the, the G kids. We just let them kids alone. You know what I'm saying? We let Rashawn uh, suck his thumb all the way till he was in the 12th grade. We never said nothing to him. You know what I'm saying? We knew that boy was going to grow up and be, be you know what I'm saying? We, we lit uh, Queese. We, we all knew Queese was going to be like that. You know what I'm saying? We graduated. He full-blown came out. We like, bro, we, we been new. Why you on Facebook talking about, oh, I'm coming? Bro, we been new. We never, ever picked on them kids. But I have seen it that it's still going on. 
but I'm, so I'm not saying that's not it. But I'm saying that that's what it's for. So I do think them tying the G stuff into it is going to show about a bullying campaign, more G stuff, you know. Anyways, but yeah, the FBI is, is, is really heavy, man. So there's a lot of stuff going on with this, with this story. And this photo here is somebody wanting to post these four white kids, these four people who went to schools and did harm are still alive and the, people, the black people at the bottom are all lost their life. You know, stuff like that. You, Anyways... If you look at the top row, all those guys do have one thing in common. You know what I'm saying? They, I do think all four of those guys uh, do have some type of uh, – so, something was there. I don't think those are just organic situations. I do think most of these mass situations are somebody getting trained by the government to help push an agenda. It does, it, I, I can't see past that. You know, I don't see why anybody would want to wake up like with a Dylan Roof, all of them. All of, them need, all of these stories need to have an in-depth look at them. And ask, so we could ask all the questions. You know, my main question is, how did he get the weapon on the, at the school? You know, I ain't saying it can't happen. There's other ways. Now, here are the ones who were harmed. Mason, Shermerhorn, Christian Angulo, Richard Aspinwall, Christina Ermine, Ermi. The fact that one of the boys' name is Mason, it kind of like, uh. I got a, I got a homegirl. Her last name is Mason. So, um. This got somebody named Mason. I mean, they tied to Masons. You know what I'm saying? I just think with this story here, his name being Mason. Uh, do the Freemasons got something going on? And then Christian Angulo, basically for the, the angels. But this is that's, this is a reach. So the Mason, and the, that's a reach. <laughs> now, this right here is a chart for school situations that happened in 2024. It says there's been over 200 of them. So this has been happening all year already. And... Uh, we got to really got to do better as parents, you know, in the world right now. But uh, it's funny how they come up with this data. A lot of this, these numbers are inflated. I'm, uh, we're going to get to the, some of that. So it says, as of September of the year, there have been over 10 school situations in Georgia and total 218 in schools. It seemed like 2023 last year had the most. Uh, 2022, seemed like in 2020, 2019, what happened? Why was there a spike in 2021? Look, there was, in 2014, there was barely, then it spiked. It's crazy by how it spiked up after 2020. Oh, we gotta dig into that, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk with a few of my friends. We're gonna, we gotta. Why did the school situation spike after 2020? Like they started raising in 2018. Look how low the numbers was in 2014. It's like it was that piece. What changed? And if y'all got something in the comment section, you got any ideas? But 2023, look how bad it got in 2023 for school situations like that. This is crazy. Maybe because it's getting closer to the election. I have no idea. The data includes any instance of a weapon fired or brandished and it hit school property, including gang violence, domestic incidents, and accidents. So some of the numbers are kind of inflated, but for a spike like that, it's kind of mind-boggling. What y'all think in the comment section? Why would a situation like this happen? You know, why would uh, all of a sudden from 2020, we get over 100 more situations that happens at school? Over 100, you know, maybe it was because people was depressed. And like the majority, nearly 51% of schools in the last 10 years, the fatal incident in North Georgia happened during the school day while class were in session. The 2022 in Texas that harmed 19 children or took the lives of 19 children, two teachers, for example, occurred while school was in session. I, I didn't even know about that one. We probably got looking look into all that. I might need to read in that one too. I'm pretty sure there are some situations with that story as well that has some red flags in it. That's uh, kind of situations I don't agree with. So the rest happens after school hours, mostly during extra activities like sport and school events, such as in 2023, situations at New Jersey High School football game where a 10-year-old was was uh, his life, lost his life. Schools happen, that happen inside the school building tend to be more harmful. So in 2024, 18 of the 46 people uh, lost their lives in school situations where under the age of 18 figure that does not include the students or teachers that were who lost their lives, you know, but... um. Yeah, that's this is uh, some some wild information. So here's here's the toll of, of the of the lives lost. Look at 2014, 2016. There was a spike in 2018, and then 2020. Look at 2022. Look at 2023. It just the numbers just don't. What were we doing in 20? Why didn't all of a sudden things just got more violent after 2018 closing to 2020? Man, we was we were living in peace around that. Time. I think we was living in. I remember 2014, 20. The crazy stuff wasn't happening like that. The world was normal. 
So since 1960s, mass situations incidents where four or more people are ha- lost their lives or injured represents only a small fraction of the numbers of gun um, situations and injuries of schools. U.S. over 70 percent of the deaths and 60 percent of the wounded are in incidents that are not classified as mass, but and don't garner much attention. Fall 2012 at Columbine High School, at the time, the nation's many states stated that mandating active drills, which reached 95 percent of public schools in 2015, 2016. So that's a lot of information. We got to dive deep on why this stuff, why they have a spike in 2020, um, after 2020. Uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't remember the, the Columbine situation being in 2012. I thought it was way early, like 07. Maybe it's a Mandela. Maybe I'm just, my brain just, just dried out. But yeah, what y'all think about this topic, man? What y'all think about this? I do think the FBI got involved and trained this kid and set this up so he can get more strict laws. Um, I, really, I really hate that people lose their lives. And this is also another way to have fear mongering where people are afraid to send their kids to school, where we're going to depend more on the government. It's always a end game for these people. They're going to always continue to have an end game and have ways to try to keep us in a state of fear and shock so we can always have them protecting us, you know, because uh, now we're going to be feeling soon. I think they might have us go where we go back to homeschool and where we're locked in the house. I think that's what they want us to do. Let me know in the comment section what y'all think, man. Remember, it's the NDO movement. The whole day's off. We working every day. And this is how we're going to be rocking, man. Y'all be blessed. Y'all be safe. I'm out.